Miss Julie is by August Strindberg, and the themes in the show, the way we're interpreting, the themes are about expectation. So it's about how society expects us to behave versus our own personal desires for our lives. Intermingling with different stations is kind of a huge conflict in this show. The show is in, set in 1890, so it's dealing a lot with um, issues of women's and men's equality, um, social equality, socioeconomic equality, the fact that people who have more money or title feel their station is higher than people who are in the service industry, who are lower class people. And just that whole, the whole battle of how those expectations affect people and what they do. It's a midsummer celebration. The master of the house has gone to a party and his daughter, who of course is of higher station, has stayed behind and she's partying with the staff of the house. The plot of this story takes place during this party and there's a valet who's engaged and or dating a cook in the household. Some relations take place between the Count's daughter and the valet. So it's just following what happens after that takes place. It's more like a Downton Abbey where it's somewhat of a manners play but it's not comedy. Everyone's trying to keep up the appearances staying within their lane. The way we're structuring it and playing it um, is more of a commentary on society. What role does society have in the way people behave? Can you behave in a way you want to? And if you can, do you have to be away from society in order to do that? Or do you have to follow society's rules? The play was originally billed as a naturalistic play. And so we are approaching it being a naturalistic play by playing it in real time it will feel more like daily life to us. When people go off, there isn't a scene change. It's people, usually Courtney, cleaning, and time passes normally. Having to like deal with an accent now, I haven't had to deal with that since Charlie's aunt. I marble my words, so I've been watching a lot of Downton Abbey, which I've never had to do before in my entire life, um, to try and get the diction and the timing of how I talk. Mm -hmm. And David's been helping a lot. He's been giving a lot of good tips. So it's kind of been fun for me exploring. We're trying to find like the joy and the different levels of the drama. And so that's been a lot of fun um, for me to explore as I'm experimenting sometimes with different lines. I just love how many new faces we have in the show. That's always really nice. You can expect to have a good time with the show because there's singing, there's dancing, there's there actually is a lot of good moments in this show besides being just a drama. There's a lot of little lightheartedness, especially when the revelers come in. They're just trying to like find food and keep partying, keep the good times going. So they're, they're really nice, they're really fun. Our students are doing a great job with this show. At first they struggled with the idea that they could take time on stage to perform actions without dialogue, which is always a struggle for an actor because it feels self-indulgent. It gives us a chance to take a breath and feel empathy for the characters and live in their world for a moment and relate it to ourselves without feeling like we're gonna miss something if we think about what's happening. They've embraced it. And I've seen them take that idea and take it into their beginning directing class and start to use the idea that in theater, we aren't always speaking. We don't have to speak to be acting or to watch a story. So that's been fun and exciting and a different thing for them.